starting again. Okay. Right. Yeah. right, if you if you look at this one you can see where I've mixed up a colour. Actually this bright sort of creamy colour is going to turn clear. But it's actually what I've done is I've mixed a sort of orange in with this PVA. PVA is white when it's wet and it clear, dries clear. And as I was doing it, I took some white powder colour and sifted it while it was still wet. That was yesterday. And tipped the board like that. Like that. Uh, so that it all kind of cracked up. But also the material itself, the PVA, will crack up in its own little way, which you can see if you look into a bit of detail there. I'm not sure whether the camera will pick it up. So now what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to put some more orangey yellowy stuff over the top of it so that the white brings out the orangey yellowy colour and the other stuff around it will look more deeply orangey and yellowy and I've masked off these areas which are predominantly blue you can see a bit here where it's actually going to be the clear but that won't matter because that will be a sort of clear orange when it's dry so I think I'll do this one first so I'm seeing it and what I do is rather wonderful yoghurt pots. This is really good yoghurt. It's Turkish. If you can find it, you need a Turkish shop. And uh, so basically what's cool is that I've mixed up another colour. It's just white PVA with uh, some orange that I've mixed up. And this is a rather a lovely process, a bit like pouring cream. Which goes over the top there. Got a whole lot there. That's what's that? Two liters? One a kilo? So it's about a liter, isn't it? And that just all goes on. It is. It's like some cookery type thing. So that's uh, that's what drumsticks are used for. Right. Okay. So then I just need a a spreader. Just evenly spread it over if I can. I posted some pictures yesterday, which was the fifth or the sixth. I'm not quite sure what it is today, but it's the sixth or the seventh. That's somewhere around there. And this just gets all covered over there. And that was fun doing this. I like doing this. That's why I do it actually, because I like it. It's surprising. And I'm not sure quite whether. The audio is going to pick up what I'm saying enough. I should do that because it's normally quite a good thing. The iPhone for doing video, I found. It's just getting it up to. I don't want it too much over the masking tape. So it's just a bit of a waste of the stuff because it's. I've used about obviously about two liters of this stuff on this, and it's already because I like it to be thick. It's already showing signs of almost not being enough. I'm going to try and get some more PVA from somewhere. And that is getting there. So it just has to be completely covered, really. Lovely stuff. really good fun this actually, I love doing it. You've just got to be really careful not to get it on your clothes because if you do you need to wash it off while it's wet. If I was really sort of professional I'd probably be wearing overalls or something but I'm not like that. Now what I found yesterday was that some of this stuff tends to bubble up when we had to do some surgery on the uh, so it had this sort of rather sort of acne kind of appearance on it, which wasn't particularly what I was after. Sometimes you just roll with stuff. The beauty of this actually is because the PVA is white when it's wet, you never know what you're going to get. So there's quite a lot of randomness to it. And for me, it's akin to doing work in ceramics where you're doing pottery when you're, uh, you never quite know what the thing's going to look like when it comes out of the kiln. I mean, real technicians know, because they're doing so much of it. 
What we're going to do is try and make this quite thick on the corners and edges where the masking tape is, because when it peels off it's thick at the edges and that gives it much more definition. So there's a fair bit, it's worth just spending a bit of time and putting a bit of effort into making it thick in all the right places. So this process reminds me a little bit of French polishing which I did quite a lot of over the years restoring pianos because you're trying to even it all out. Excuse me, smithing. I'm just getting over a cold. That's my excuse. My mum hated it because I was a smither as a child as well. You probably can't hear much of what I'm saying but just tough I suppose. Getting there, I just want it to be thick at the edges where the tape is, and you can see because it's it does have a little bit of transparency to it. And uh, yeah, there we go. Put some on there. That corner's looking nice and stacked up. Of course, the bits where I've got the masking tape on the cross bars, for want of a better word, are um, going to come off in a minute. Because if you leave this stuff to dry before you peel the tape off, you're just going—you're never going to get it off. Because the PVA is quite strong stuff. If there's any builder's merchant will tell you it's stronger than the wood itself. thing is, the difference between this stuff, which was made up for me especially by Alan Takurta at Bondex years ago, who I haven't heard from for a while, I don't even know whether he's still in business, was that if you buy PVA glue in a shop or builder's merchants, they put chalk in it to bulk the weight out. Which in some cases is great, because um, it gives it an opacity that is sometimes desirable on some of my other paintings, like these ones over here. You can actually see, I don't know whether that's going to pick it up in this light. Perhaps I'll switch the other light on. Uh, let's see if that lift seems a bit. But you can see here, if you look on this picture, bring up here, this is one of my earlier paintings that I did back in about 1999. It's got this opacity, and that was... Um, that was an ordinary kind of PVA glue that you get from the builders merchants. Or actually, this stuff was platinum, which came from educational suppliers, and was supply is the normal stuff that they supply to schools and stuff like that. But it, you can see it's quite nice, but it's opaque because it gives you this cloudy or misty effect over the colour, and actually that colour underneath is quite a strong red. But I wanted to be able to control it a bit more, so I got this other stuff made up. It was also, I was looking for a bulk manufacturer because I wanted to buy it in a bit more bulk. Because as you can see, I use quite a lot of it when I'm painting. And uh, it, I, I also found out it comes in various different sort of viscosities or something. There's probably a better term for it than that. But it, you know, this one that I'm using now is a one that goes hard when it dries. But there's another one that's quite plastic. It's got a sort of plasticizer in it. So I've got, got two types made up. But it's absolutely clear. It hasn't got any of the chalk in it. So you can actually add whiting to it if you want to have a bit of opacity or something. But, it's, but that's something you can control much better if you get the proper clear stuff from a manufacturer. There are plenty of them around. So I think I've just about got to where I want to be as far as that is concerned. See if I can just, maybe I can just persuade a bit on the side of this line back up towards where I want it because there's masking tape coming through here. But it doesn't matter if it's got drippy bits here or there. 
that just adds to the kind of character of the thing I've found. And uh, if I just do this last one here in the same way, just to build up the thickness of it as much as possible. And if the uh, iPhone battery doesn't run out before I get to the end, it probably won't actually. So then similarly, just to bring out those bits that are already proud of the surface, it gives it much more of a... I didn't actually intentionally start doing paintings that look like sort of ceramic things. That wasn't my intention at all, but it seems to be how it's turned out. Great place that somewhere. There's another one of these, and then we'll take the masking tape off. That way it needs a bit. Bit of it, I think. That'll do. quite nice to have a bit of texture to it, I think I'll put a bit of texture on that. Because later on, if I've got a bit of textured relief type surface, by just, rub, by just dragging this across like that, when it starts to go off of it, later on I can take an almost dry brush of white or black or some other colour, acrylic paint, and just bring out and e emphasise that texture. See, I'll show you what I mean in a minute on another picture where I've done quite a lot of that. If you look at that great big one that I did back in about 1992, three, I'll come over and show you what I mean. Uh, this one, you can see if you look here, I don't know whether the camera can pick that up, if you bring it in it might expose right. But that, all that white, that's just a almost dry paintbrush gone across where I've textured the PVA underneath, you see. And you can see it here as well, well I've done it with a, I've used the ultramarine there on a dry brush against these bits that I've masked off and are proud of the surface. So it actually brings stuff out and all over here, all that texture you can see is what I've done, what I've demonstrated there, when it's dry, going over with an almost dry brush to bring out all that texture. And I think it works quite well. Go back to what I was doing. Uh, right. Moment of truth. <coughs> Remember which one I put on last, ideally. I think it's that one. Yes, it was. So off that comes. Come on. Doesn't matter if it splashes onto other pictures, people's furniture, priceless rugs, and all that kind of thing. All that sort of fun. That can go there. Then it was this one. So you try and keep it away from. Sometimes I'm a bit naughty with these things and just splosh them over other things in a kind of um, delinquent way because um, I'm like that. And it's, you know, it's all part of the sort of randomness. Because some of it's very controlled, as you can see with this masking off into rectangles. But I do like things to be a little bit anarchic. And just throw a bit of I don't care into the equation. Because then that's me. And a bit as well. A bit of the merit splashes over onto that other picture there, which I'm going to get around to in a minute. And then it just doesn't look like anything much, it just looks like some cream rectangles. But when that dries, which will probably take a day or two, obviously, it is, although it is water-based, it's on very, very thick. And I'm just debating whether to just give that another dusting of something. I'm not sure yet. I think what I'll do is I'll leave it this time, actually, so that we can just see what happens is where I've dusted the white underneath. And that's quite pleasing as it is. It looks like icing on a cake, doesn't it? Okay. <coughs>